Hey guys, welcome to our 40th episode of our Unshakable podcast. And today I have with me my wife, Pastor Brandy, again. So glad that she's with me. Thank you for coming, honey. Of course. And we're excited about doing this 40th one. It's a big deal. So uh, we've come a long way and we still got a long way to go, but it keeps getting better every week. And so I just found out today through Christian who told us that the number 40 in in Hebrew Hebrew means mother. So we have the mother of the house and the mother of my kids here with me today. So excited about having her with us. So uh, it's going to be a good one. We want to go back and and talk about what we've been, uh, you know, preaching on, teaching on on Sundays, which is on uh, what is love. And we really went on about the the love of the Father. So you started on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very powerful, powerful Sunday. Um, And I know you sometimes feel like, I always have to do Mother's Day. But it's just, it's always good having you do Mother's Day. It's kind of tradition. It is. And then uh, you then you think, well, should I do something like uh, a really motherly type of sermon? But then it's always like the Lord wants you to do I something not a little a different. I'm a typical woman. <laughs> so, but it was a powerful service. Fashion show and makeup. <laughs> but you, you did it on, obviously, the love of the Father, what God's, God's love looks like, because God is love. That was really the, a big premise of your message. Well, I think that a lot of people think that love looks like you know, just mercy and compassion. And that is and a sweetness. huge part of love or just kindness. Yeah. But love is truth. And you can't actually have truth without love. I mean, right. love without truth. Right. And so that's where you took us uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit on that first Sunday. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was very powerful. And it was really good. And you talked about if you want to find out what love is, you have to look at God because God is love. And then... Uh, well, because love is so perverted now. Yeah. You just, they say love is, a, they conflate love and acceptance, and love and acceptance aren't the yeah. same thing. Truth expels lies. Right. And truth is a the lion's share of what love is. You cannot yeah. have, like I just said, you can't have love without truth. Right. And then, obviously, God is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the, the truth, truth, and the life. Why did he have to put an emphasis on that? Uh, because it's because like because deception is the number one tool of the enemy. And Pilate said this uh, even whenever he was just having this whole dilemma with Jesus because he didn't want to crucify him, that he was like between this rock and a hard place, and we won't go into all of that. But one of the things he did say is to Jesus is what is truth, and I think that's still the same question that people are asking, trying to figure it out. In yes, one year reading Bible. We did. So if you've been reading with us on the one year reading Bible, you would have read. We that. didn't read it together. No, but we read it separately. Yeah. Obviously, I could tell because you brought it back up to me. You're all excited about it. Yeah. So, um, but what is truth? Really, Jesus is the, and obviously the Father are the ones that's going to tell us uh, what truth is because they are truth. Well, I mean, just think about it. I think there's a lot of correlation between our relationship with our children and God's relationship with his children. Mm -hmm. I love my children, so I'm going to tell my children the truth. Why? So that I can give them advantage. If they believe a lie, then they are automatically at a disadvantage. So God always wants to give you advantageous gifts. And truth is a gift. Yeah. And, you know, if if you want to find out uh, what love is, you have to look at God and God is going to give you the truth. He's going to, he's going to tell you the truth. He's going to, uh, not just tell you the truth about your life, but about who he is and how he thinks and how he sees everything. So you Which started is so far superior to the way that we think. Oh yeah. I just sometimes wonder like <laughs> when we get to heaven, are we going to be like, my goodness, we were so mired down in the culture and maybe even a little desensitized mm. and everything that we were just surrounded yeah. with. How 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 large is the gap between what we live in daily yeah. and the absolute truth of who God is and what his intended purpose for mankind was? And you can only see that from the scriptures, and that's right. why the Bible tells us over and over and over again about taking time to be in the scripture, study to show yourself approved unto God, meditate in the word day and night. Oh my gosh, uh, I feel know. like that is the that is the total emphasis of what we were put on earth to do. Because that's the only way you're going to really know. Right. And that's the only way you're going to not only begin to renew your mind, but to continue, 
continually renew your mind. Right. And it's something that you got to continually do. It's not just a one-time thing. This is a lifelong thing because you're always getting hit with things like, you know, uh, what is love? And, and, and then society who has pr predominantly rejected the truth comes up with their own de definition of what love is and, then, and it's perverted. So I think going back to your sermon, you were giving us that, um, you know, clarity that, that God is love. And so because God loves us, he's going to tell us the truth. And of course, you are coming from the premise that Jesus is coming and there is a coming judgment uh, after Jesus comes for his people and that God's going to tell people, hey, get ready I'm coming, but as well, there's a judgment that's coming. And so that seems to be your message. Obviously, you are a prophetic voice. Uh, and uh, it's kind of like when Brother Hagen would preach, he'd always go back to faith. He'd be teaching on whatever, but he'd find him back to faith. Uh, for, with me, it's kind of like I'll be preaching on any, anything I'm preaching on. I come oh, back to, to pray and read your word. Pray, the, pray and read the Bible. Pray and read the Bible. And then with you, it's gonna, it really goes back to that Jesus is coming. Get ready. Right. Yeah. And I think when you try to like, when you're kind of, when you're a preacher, especially you want to have a fresh voice, right. you want to have a fresh revelation and that's how people get off. You have to stick with whatever God right. has put in your heart, the message that he's given you and, and just follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Right. And who cares what everybody else thinks? Who cares if people like you or they don't like you or they receive your message or they don't receive your message? Like I, like God t spoke to me on that day, he said, you know what? It's not your job to police what other people do right. and how they react to you. Your job is just to obey me. And going back to like the way that God, God's, our, God's relationship with his children um, correlates with our relationship with our children. Right. I thought you did a beautiful job yesterday just talking about the road to maturation and how God, God disciplines us like we are supposed to discipline our own children and right. how we're supposed to administer um, guidance yeah. and truth and, and expect growth in every season of their lives. I thought you did a great job yesterday. Well, thank you. Right. I tried. We're like building each other up. You're amazing, Greg Stars. <laughs> but, I mean, that's really going off of in the love of God. You have to look at how does how does God then relate to us. And uh, I went off that verse in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, 18. So come out from among unbelievers. Separate, sever yourselves from them, says the Lord, and touch not any unclean thing. Then I will receive you kindly, treat you with favor. I will be a father to you. You shall be my sons and daughters. This verse obviously begins with coming out from among the world, coming out from among believers. That's a that is a, a really talking about repentance. It's talking about a, a decision you make, a choice you make. Uh, it's not you cleaning yourself up. It's not you perfecting yourself before you can come to God. But it's making that decision to come out from where you are and give your allegiance over to God the Father through the to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, and then he will be a father. Then that's to whenever you. he receives you kindly. That's his acceptance of you. That's whenever he treats you with favor. And then he'll be a father to you, and you'll be a sons and daughters. So then, off that last part is where yesterday's sermon we we, we really hit on about how, what does it mean for the father to be a father to us? Because that's really going to be a demonstration of his love to us. So when you look at the father, uh, and it's just like me and you, and we have obviously had our kids and we began this process right when they were born to really take them from the time of just being one day old to the day that they would be released into life and become an adult and do it on their own and have their own family. And so we started this process really of training and, and it's to train them to become ultimately mature sons and daughters of ours right. that would obey the father, that would do the father's will, that would fulfill the father's plan in life. That would be healthy, well-adjusted, right. uh, operational, functional in society yeah. and, and obedient to the will of God. That's the goal. You That's want the, goal. the absolute best for your children. You want them to exceed you in every single way. And, and so obviously we'll never exceed the Heavenly Father, <laughs> but He does want to bring us up to maturity. Right. And so that process is, is really the process that He calls in Hebrews chapter 12. It's, it's the word discipline, which is also the word training. Sometimes when people think that, um, you know, uh, I, I've got to discipline my kids then they think that means you got to spank them, you got to punish them. Now, spanking, punishment, or whatever tool you're using at the moment, depending on where they are in their their upbringing, to bring that necessary 
chastisement, so to speak, for disobedience in their life. It, that, that's part of discipline. Uh, but it's it's not all what discipline is. If people just think of discipline as just smacking and corporal hitting, punishment. corporal punishment, then you're 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 just really missing the boat here. That's actually the result of a lack of discipline. Yeah, because that's when, whenever that's you're... when it becomes abusive. Right. Yeah, I mean the word discipline actually means uh, training or to bring up a child. It means to take them from immaturity to maturity it, it's to take them from being a baby to an adult that's what that word i think something means. too we, we were talking about it in meetings this morning just with the staff and one of the things that was said i think it was by christian he was like it was really refreshing to see that all christians don't look the same that there's different levels and i don't know like especially new believers when they come in they kind of they they measure themselves against people that are farther along in the path that they are because you know Unlike newborn babes, we have a we have a greater consciousness right. when we're born again because we're you know at the age of accountability and we understand a few things. So we can look at someone and we can see maturity in them, and then we expect the same maturity in, in ourselves. So I think they can be really hard on themselves, mm. or they can feel like it's too hard; they can't right. do it. I think your message really kind of helped them to understand that. No, you're just in your babyhood stage, right. and this this is a process, and it's a process to maturity. And it's not going to happen overnight. It no. doesn't happen automatically because you're born again. It's a work that the Holy Spirit works in your soul right. as you commit to the renewing of your mind. And, and God gives you yeah. many different avenues to do that. Because when you're a newborn babe, you're not going to be disciplined to read your word right. and pray. A lot of them don't even understand how to pray. Right. Um, they don't understand. They don't have the discipline to well, read Well, it's like a baby that just gets, you know, is born. They're the they're usually at the breast or they're being bottle fed, but they don't feed themselves for a while. So God gives you pastors. He gives right. you elder brothers or elder right. sisters or people that are farther along in the path that maybe aren't maximum maturity, but they're still farther yeah. along than you that help you to mature. Right. I think that's a really important thing to understand when you come into the kingdom because it can become something that causes you to give up. Yeah. Well, that's the Father's love to us. I mean, he wants to, he wants to train us. He wants to bring us up. You begin, the Bible says we're like newborn babes. Uh, that's desiring the sincere milk of the word. That word babes in the Greek word, in the Greek is the word brephos, which means at the breast. That's how you begin this whole process, like a little baby. But then God, through, through the Father's training, he wants to take us farther and bring us from being a baby that's on the milk of the word and start taking us to become a child and then from a child to a teenager and a teenager eventually to a, a mature adult, spiritually speaking, which the Bible calls that a weos. Yeah. And a weos is one that's mature. It's one that's responsive to the Holy Spirit. It's one that lives out of their spirit, not out of their flesh. Sacrificial, it's one crucified that, in right. flesh. It's one that's, that's learned how to suffer in their flesh by saying no to sin, you know, no to, to worldly desires. And, and not that they're perfect, but, but they are mature and they've learned how to live out of the word and by the leading of the spirit, not just mentally or not just even I emotionally. I thought it was really, really interesting yesterday too, how you kind of, um, you you made the example that a teenager often looks like an adult, yeah. but their maturity level determines where they are. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, like a teenager can look like a full grown adult. And right. one of, and I'm not putting down teenagers, I love teenagers. I, I spend time with them every week. I'm their youth pastor. But one of the things or a hallmark of a teenager, universally speaking, this doesn't, it's not like every single teenager is like this, but right. a lot of them do think they know it all because yeah. they get a little bit of knowledge. They yeah. think they know more, especially than the people that are older yeah. and maybe not as hip to the culture around them because you don't know about the culture. They think you don't know much. Yeah. So they, they, they have like a know-it-all attitude and that's the same thing that can happen in yeah. the maturation process of a believer, you can get a little bit of knowledge. You get pride. You think you yeah. know more than your teachers. You can become unsubmissive, unyielding, and yeah. you actually cause a thwarting of your process right. because you don't think you need to grow anymore. Right. So I thought that was really interesting how that, like, there's probably a lot more people than we think that there are. I, I was even examining myself. Are there areas 
in my maturity where I could grow in? Like, yeah. am I am I unsubmitted in any way? Do right. I think I know it all? Am I not humble? Am I full of pride in any area? Just because you're prideful in one area doesn't mean you're prideful in every area, but there's areas that we can all work on. Right, and I think... And I think that that's the goal of a sermon. Right. Is to make everybody examine themselves yeah. and go, okay, where am I at? Yeah, in well, this whole process, and it is a process. It's something that it, it's it's a day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year process. Now, it doesn't have to mirror exactly like a, a, a human does in their growth. I mean, it doesn't it's not going to take us 18, 20, 25 years to become a mature believer. It could actually speed up the process, and I think that has to do with our attitude. I think it's how much you put into it is how much you're going to get out of it. Right. And I think that has a lot. If you're to, flippant, you're not going to get much right. out of it. And it's your attitude. It's uh, am I, uh, am I taking the time to get in the Word? Am I taking the time to respond to the Holy Spirit? Am I yielding over? Am I being obedient? Am I taking what my pastor's preaching on and applying it to my life? You know, am I choosing today to have? I'm just going to have a carnal day. You know, adults. You know, when you're adult spiritually, you just don't have carnal days. You you make a decision. I'm not having that. I just don't do that anymore. That's what I used to do. But sometimes, to me, a teenager can know a lot. They can have a lot of information. They've grown. But in that teenage stage, you still find some things that's, like, irritating. I mean, you if as a pastor, I can look at someone that's a teenager in the Lord, and, and it's like, man, they're doing good. They're, then all of a sudden, they're like, what happened? Why are they acting that way? Why, why is this going on right now? And it's because they still need to come to that next place. God's trying to get some of that rebellion out, some of that inconsistency out, some of that know-it-all attitude out so that they can actually become a responsible, mature believer. Right, and I think it's really important to know the benefits of maturity. Why is maturity a goal? Yeah. Because you cannot actually achieve if there's not maturity there. Right. You won't have the discipline. You won't have the drive. You won't have the sacrifice right. you won't do what's best because it's best it you'll be a feelings based person and if you're a feelings based person then you're going to hit and miss you're right. not going to be consistent you're not going to hit your mark yeah. and the goal is to run our race and to finish it and the goal is to fulfill the plan and the will of god and in order to do that maturity is a necessary part yeah, of the equation it is and you know ultimately he says i want my kids to share in my holiness so if we share in his holiness then we also get to share in his glory right. based upon Romans chapter 8. And the glory of God is the, is the manifested presence of God. The glory of God is something that's very holy, but it's also very it's, precious. It's a reward. And it's a reward that God allows his mature sons and daughters to be able to access because he can trust you with his manifested presence, which I want that in my life more. I want to carry the presence of God in a stronger way in a greater way, and I want to be able to be trusted with that type. With the greater things. Yeah, with the greater things, you know. So uh, ultimately, that's where he wants to bring us to, where we're, we're conformed into his image. When we're when people can look at us and they can see a manifestation of Jesus, they right. can see God in our lives, and they can they can kind of get to know God better by just observing us. Right. That that's how we're manifesting God. So that's a process. God uses the agent of the Holy Spirit the agent of the word to do these things. So you cannot neglect the word, nor can you ignore the Holy Spirit and expect to grow. Or the gifts in your life. Yeah. Church is is not church. Yeah. a chore. Church is um, a necessity. A it's necessity. a training ground. It's an and equipping it feels place. Like, it feels like you're you, when you're the pastor and you say that, like it, you're just, it's like a self-serving yeah. thing. But um, I've not always been a pastor, and church has been a very, very necessary yeah. part of my maturation process. It's been very important for me to come into the fullness of what I've been yeah. called to do. It wouldn't have happened without the local church. Right. And, and, and that's a, a huge way that this continues to happen because you need, well, you need like a spiritual dad, spiritual mom in your life, which would be your pastors or the pastor couple like we are, that continues to help people. Now, we have all different levels of, of Christians at our church. We have some people that are coming that probably aren't born again. Uh, uh, that are, are, are beginning to make that decision. We probably have some that think they are, but they really haven't come to that place. But then we have others, a lot, that are truly born again, but they're just starting that journey, or they're in that childhood stage, or they're in the teenage stage. And then we have some, obviously, and I think uh, several, many, that are, that are uh, you know, mature believers, 
But then as, as a family, you come into the church, the local church, and you get to pastor or father, mother, all of these people on their levels that they're at. Some need that's, more attention where, than others. That's where the gift is supernatural yeah. because it has the ability to touch every age group. Yeah, but all, but all levels need it. Yeah. All levels need it. So that's how we ended up last Sunday with this message. I know there's a lot more to that. A uh, lot of things that we could say about it, but um, God wants all of us to mature. One of the things I said probably several times is that God's not okay with you staying at the same level. He's not okay with you staying at the breast. He's not okay with you being a baby. He's not okay with you staying as a toddler. He's not okay with you staying as a child. He's not okay with you even being a teenager. He is not okay with any of that. Now, wherever you are at the moment is where you are. You develop, and he's going to love you right where you are but he, then he wants you to progress with him. And so if you should be a teenager and you're still at the breast, God is not okay with that. In fact, he's working on you, he's speaking to you, but if you keep resisting, you're gonna find that your life is gonna start experiencing things that it should not be experiencing because you're out of the will of God. I mean, you're, you're being stunted in your spiritual growth and it's causing a lot more issues in your life at probably opening the door up to the enemy and a lot of things that should not be there because you're just not cooperating. I'm laughing because all I'm thinking of is you don't have much time. No. Or like, and that, it just goes back to what you're saying. Right. I am always just thinking about you don't have much time. And I'm 45 years old now and I look back at my life and I regret the time that I've wasted. I don't want to get to be 75, 80 years old if we have that long left. Right. And look back on my life and be like, I, sh I wish I would have done what was necessary early on so that I could have completed everything right. that was assigned to me. So it's just funny that that's where I go to. I'm always like, well, it's we're true. just here for a little while. We let's, are here let's, for a while. But let's the, just do what we need to do. The beautiful thing about God is this, is that he can do a lot. He can in redeem a little, the time. He can redeem the time. He can do a lot in a little bit of time if we give him our attention, our affection, our devotion. Oh my give gosh, him our time. we're like way over. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. It's our forever. 40th episode, so we went a little bit Our 40th long. anniversary. Just kidding. Yes. We got married when I was five. Oh, yes, because <laughs> you are 45. 40th episode here. Anyway, closing this up. <laughs> anyway, we had a mishap before. He said 40th anniversary instead of 40th episode. Yeah, maybe they'll show that in a clip You won't somewhere. get the joke. I just had to explain. <laughs> so the mother of the house is here today for the 40th anniversary of our podcast. So, 40th anniversary. I mean, <laughs> wow. Let's do this again. Cut. So, uh, this week we're going to, coming up on Sunday, we're going to come back again to what is love. And I'm still not 100% sure which way we're heading and whether we're going to go back what to this or if we're going to take this another direction. But you guys don't want to miss this Sunday because we're going to be on part number four of what is love. And uh, excited about it. It's going to be the month of June next Sunday. Can't believe we're already going into June. Jesus uh, is coming. So, you know. September if, cometh. If you, you're probably a subscriber. If you're not, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, tell people about it. Uh, it's every Wednesday, 12 o'clock. This comes on 12 noon. Obviously, you can watch it other times. But, man, we're just glad that you decided to be with us today. It was, it's good having uh, my wife with me. I always love having her at my side. She is my helpmate. Do you and really like it better when I help you? Do I this? do. I do. It makes it a lot more interesting, I think. Because if when I'm just here, I'm just droning talking. On. And I'm just going on. I'm not droning on. It's wow. <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty good. I mean. I think you do a great I get job. Christian I think you do better by yourself. Christian and Gibby me. start crying every time because they're just in tears. Do they repent? They repent. They're just so touched. Constantly. It's just, it's just great. They're like right, laying yeah. prostate. Right now, I have to always tell Is it prostate or prostrate? I always get, it's prostate? No, pro whatever. I always get those words confused. Which one is it? I don't know now. Let's just admit <laughs> that. You got me all mixed up. I don't want to get into your they're on their nightmare. Face. <laughs> anyway, Get here on Sunday, bring somebody with you, invite a friend. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day just to get together and to be father, to be mother, to be matured in the things of God. And if there's people that don't know Jesus, bring them with you because God does want to change their life this Sunday, okay? <laughs> so thanks for taking time to be with us. Mm -hmm. Honey, thanks for being on this, this episode. And uh, next week will be episode 41. You don't want to miss it.
see you later. <laughs>